what to be concerned with them, and what to not worry about them are. Guilds and unions. Now, above the line here, number two, writers belong to the WGA, the Writers Guild of America. In your workbook, turn to page 37, the budget sheet, and you'll find three numbers. Number two, where we'll talk about Writers Guild, three, Directors Guild, four, the Screen Actors Guild, page 37. Number two, Writers, Writers Guild. Number three, Directors, Directors Guild. <coughs> Separate Guild. Number three, Directors, Directors Guild. The Directors Guild is the DGA, Directors Guild of America. Actors, cast, actors join a guild. They join their guild is called SAG, Screen Actors Guild, SAG. So above the line, guilds, three separate ones, Writers Guild, Directors Guild, SAG, three separate entities. Below the line, union. Above the line, guilds. Stop combining the words guilds and unions. Everybody puts it together like it's one word. And you will, and the rest of the class will be talking like it's one word, but you've got to understand it's four separate entities we're relating to. The three separate guilds, the Writers Guild, Directors Guild, and SAG, and then the one union, which is I-A-T-S-E. I-A-T-S-E, which is nicknamed I-A, which stands for International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. That's the one union we'll be dealing with. Above the line guilds, below the line unions. Above the line guilds, below the line unions. Four separate entities. Now let's get into each one of them. Here's what you're to do as a producer. Here's your homework. Independent filmmaker, producer, here's your homework. Contract, contact each of the four separate guilds and unions. Call them up or go to their office and ask for or purchase these three things from them. One, get the independent filmmaker or producer's contract. One, the independent filmmaker or producer's contract. Each guild or union has a separate one. Two, get their rule and rate book. Two, their rule and rate book. Three, get their low budget provisions or their low budget agreements. It's your job to get those three separate things from the four separate guilds and unions. You'll find out a weird thing when you call them up and you go to get them. Half the time, they won't give it to you. They'll tell you it's 15, they'll charge you it's 15 to $25 to purchase them, but then they'll cop an attitude and say, well, we just don't give them out. Uh, we'll have to set you up with an appointment to take a meeting. Give me a break. You know, da 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 But you gotta go through it, you will get them. You gotta go through some ego little situation of the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, SAG, and the union to get their agreements, low budget agreements, filmmakers contract, and rate and rule book. So when you get their agreement or their contract, you'll see it's only two to four pages. And they'll put pressure on you right then and there that you gotta sign it. Signing it means, here's the new phrase, you become a signator of the Writers Guild, or of SAG, or of DGA. And you'll see the two or four page contract and you'll read it quickly and it'll look very simple. But you'll see in each of these contracts it states that you adhere to, if you sign, when you sign or you become a signatory, it's a legal contract now. And it states that you will adhere to the rules and regulations. So if you get the rule and regulation book, which you see is 50 to 200 pages, so now this simple two to four page contract now actually becomes a 52 to 204 page contract. And you got to understand all those rule and regulation, every rule and regulation cost you money. So let's get down to that, by the way. When you get a problem and you can't get all the rules and regulations... Then get either the Brooks Rate Guide or the Industry Labor Guide on page three, book number 33. Do all the Guild and Union regulations. Then you get the low budget agreements. What I want to get you away from is just get the paperwork, don't sign anything, don't become a signator. Now let me get you down to, let's get down to the bottom line. Turn in your workbook to page 16 where you see the information about the guilds with the crossed out numbers that have the updated numbers for all the low budget agreements for each of the guilds. Turn to page 16 for the updated numbers. From the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, and SAG. 
I've crossed out numbers because these numbers that I wrote down were about two years ago when I first did this page. And you notice that they're crossed out because the numbers have changed. And you remember every year it seems like a guild or union is on strike. There are four separate guilds or unions, and they sign agreements with the big networks and studios and the big producers association for two or three year periods. So every year, one of the guilds or unions contract is coming up. And every year, one of these guilds or unions is always saying, we're going on strike. Big deal. This doesn't have anything to, us, to do with us, the independent filmmakers. So every year, though, numbers go higher or change. So let's take a look at the Writers Guild. Writers Guild, if you sign, become a signature of the Writers Guild or an adhere to their rules and regulations, they call low budget anything under two and a half million dollars. So if you sign and agree to do a low budget provision, you think you're going to get away cheap, and you want to hire a writer, then you've got to pay for the treatment $13,928 first draft 12,104, final draft 4,706, pay pension, health, welfare, vacation, it's about 12, 12 and a half percent, and that writer, if they're in the guild, probably has an agent 10 or 15 percent, that's how we get up to $35,000. That's low budget. That's low budget. Next, let's go down to the Directors Guild. Directors Guild, they call low budget anything under 500,000. By the way, they, cha they changed that about six months ago. It's now up to two mil, I believe. So low budget is any budget that's under two mil. And you can hire a director for $4,603 per week, which is actually changed now. I think it's $5,505 per week. So you can hire a director in the Directors Guild to shoot your two or three week feature film for two or three weeks, paying them $5,505. So that sounds like eleven dollars or $15,000. But when you read the rule and regulations, they state, yes, you can, but it must be for minimum 10 weeks. We don't care if you shoot in two or three, pay for 10. It's not negotiable. So that's $55,000. Plus, you must hire the assistant director and the production manager. And they get paid $2,500 to $3,300 per week, minimum 10 weeks. We don't care if you think you can shoot in two or three weeks, minimum 10 weeks. So when you sign with the Director's Guild, if you do, it's going to cost you $130,000 to $160,000 for three people. It's your decision to make. Next, SAG. SAG, the day rate down here for low budget, which is now up to $800,000, is $398 a day. I believe they've now upped it about a year ago. I think it's $451 a day. SAG low budget, uh, day, day rate, and the week rate is about $1,500. Question? If you uh, sign with WGA, do you then have to use the other guilds as well? No, no. They're four entirely separate entities that don't care about each other. They just care about themselves, and they really care about getting their pension, health, welfare, vacation to pay for their office staff and their office building. And then they help to collect on royalties, which I shouldn't say that they help their people. But they're four separate entities. If you sign with one guild, it has nothing to do with the others. That's what we'll get to when we get up in budget, when you mix and match the different guilds and unions. That's going to take about five hours before I get to that subject. So now actors, <coughs> SAG actors. You can hire for $450 a day or $1,500 a week if you sign with. Okay. And remember, you've got to look at the rule and regulations books. And every rule and regulation costs money, costs money. Every actor must have their own dressing room. Oh, all right, for the own dressing room, that's when you get those big trucks with those little portholes in it. So now you sign with SAG besides the day rate and driving expense and meal penalty expense and wardrobe expense. Now you've got to rent the big truck. Who's going to drive that big truck? You think the rental agency is going to let you take a 21-year-old production assistant that just graduated from Columbia and drive this big truck? No, now you just walked into the Teamsters. Now they'll only rent to you if you have a professional class to da-da-da-da-da. You see how each of these rules and regulations if you sign with. Now let's go to the next subject. Do you have to sign with them? If you want to use a writer that's in the Writers Guild, do you have to sign with the Writers Guild? If you want to use a director in the Directors Guild, do you have to sign with the Directors Guild? If you want to use actors that are in SAG, do you have to sign with SAG? No! This is America. It's a free nation. You can hire who you want to hire, whenever you want to hire them, and it ain't your problem. Stop 
making it your problem. You are now producer directors, filmmakers, wearing that hat. You are not, it's not your problem. If you want to hire a writer that's in the Writers Guild, and if that writer is in the Writers Guild, and you can only budget or afford to pay 5,000 for this script, call the writer up and say, that's what I'm paying, want to do it? It's not your problem. It's not your problem. It is the writer's concern with what is going to happen with him if he takes that and then this film gets made, which it's still doubtful, and it gets out there and the executives at the Writers Guild see, hey, John, we just saw your name on a thing. It wasn't Writers Guild. Da -da 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 -da. We didn't get a pen show. You know, what's the worst comes to worst? They might find that writer in the Writers Guild. You know what the fine is? It's like 1000 to $2,000. And that writer now got the money that you paid him, three to 5000 to write the script, and got an opening title, single title card credit, writer on a film that got made and got out there. And if it's really good, he's rich and famous. So stop making it your problem. And when the writer says, no, I got to, and if the writer sticks on that, maybe you got to go to another writer. Now, here are the other things. With it, here are your naivety concerns. Well, if I don't go guild or union, if I don't sign with the Writers Guild, Directors Guild, SAG, and union, well, nobody's going to buy my film. The studios and the networks can't buy it. Wrong. They don't care. They do a lot of lip service like they care, but they don't care. All the studios and networks care when they buy product from independents is that it's good and it's marketable, and you'll have releases from everybody that you've hired. Whether it was guild or union signature, they don't care. And whether or not you work with people that are, were in the guild or union and literally scabbed for your project, they don't care. They say they care, they say it means something to them, but they don't. Take a look at, you just saw El Mariachi for $7,000 supposedly got made and got picked up by Columbia. See that Columbia? C-O-L-U-M-B-I-A, that's as big as they come. Was El Mariachi Guild or Union? No. Does anybody yelling or screaming about it? No. So stop making it an issue. Stop being big brother and thinking you gotta pay these outrageous things. So next is your fear, your concern that if you do this, you're gonna be blackballed from the industry. There's no such thing. If you are good enough to make a film that is good enough to get picked up and get out there and you're a marketable name, they'll come clamoring at your door for the next shoot. And if the next shoot has enough money in, then you'll be a guild or a union shoot on the next one. Don't worry about this alleged blackball thing. Next is that thing that says, if you sign with a guild or union, you're a signature, I'll get you. If you sign with a guild or union, you've got to be a signature for the rest of your life to the guild or union. Yes, that is correct. That's the contract for the life of that production company. So right now, you are Dove Simmons Production Company 32. And you sign with the Director's Guild for whatever reason to make this film. The film is over. Now you're thinking about putting together project number 33. If you can't afford to sign with the Director's Guild, you'll form another company. And that one will not be Director's Guild. Got it? So don't worry about that thing that they say, once you sign, it's got to be for the rest of your life, because every film is a new company, a new project. The question you had? Yeah, I was wondering if a, if a network is interested in running um, a non-union project, uh, do they have to pay a penalty? Uh, no, first, they don't have to pay a penalty. You'll see episodic TV shows. Number one, a lot have disappeared up to Vancouver and Toronto, but there are still some in America that are being shot. Uh, I don't know, not the Murphy Browns, <laughs> but that are being shot with non-union crews. There's a negotiating thing that goes in. That's a real high level, which it's not your concern, but it's a negotiation that the union, if they can get somebody on the crew that says, stop. Which, by the way, these are people that are working that are making 1000 to $3,000 a week. I don't want to stop. You're, I'm making money. I'm not stopping. I'm only, but let's say they can actually get that crew to stop and this show is being shot and they have a call for 13 episodes that they got to knock out in 13 episodes in these 10 or 13 weeks and they caught them right in the middle of this and the producer made a contract with ABC, NBC or CBS and the union tried to get them to walk off number one you got to get this crew to walk away from good paying jobs 
And these crew could be in the union but working non-union job right now. It does happen every now and then that they get the union the crew to then say, no, we're walking off. Now, I'm the producer. I'm stuck. I got a network contract for 13 episodes. Mm, I'm stuck. Either I got to go find another 32 bodies, which I can do in two days. It's not the actors. Remember, the actors are still there, the directors are still there, the writers are still there. Hey, I'll find another six grips real quick. I'll find another couple of DPs real quick. But maybe I don't want to deal with that. So, okay, union, all right, shut up, disappear. I'll pay your pension and health and welfare as if I was going union. Give me the union bug, and I'll stay with this crew over here. And that happens in a day. But that's not, for us as independent filmmakers, that's not our issue right now for here. Shoot. If you uh, buy the Brooks uh, Ray book, get, yeah. uh, get this other information from the different guilds that you were talking about. Yeah. You need all, all of that now. You should have it, just to be educated. But, you know, you're probably not going to go guild or union in your first one or two shoots. But, you know, you should have it in case something happens and you can grow up there, just to get educated on it. Okay. So the guild or union, next, let me go through a second, I'll get to you in a second. Number one, Writers Guild. In my opinion, there are only about, of the writers in the Writers Guild, let's say there are about seven or 10,000 writers in the Writers Guild, I would guess there'll be only about 150 that won't write for you, Scab. Writers that write episodic TV and are making three to 10,000 a week episodic TV and they're in the Writers Guild, they make a real good living doing that, but you know, it's not the feature film industry. That's a different industry. And if they can get an opening title credit on a feature film and the movie is made and it's good, that throws them into the hundred to five hundred thousand dollar category in the feature film world. And you're paying them with that opportunity. So you will get a majority of those writers that write episodic TV that are in the guild to write for you on non-guild status. That is just my opinion. Anybody here in the Writers Guild? One, uh, you want some gigs? Talk with people around here. Do you have an opening title credit on feature films? No, I work in television. Okay. You know, it's, it's your decision to be made, but it's not, here's a person, talk with, I'm not saying he will or won't, but here's a person that is in the Writers Guild, he writes for episodic TV, and maybe he'll talk with you, and if he feels that you can really make this film, and you're going to get it done, and there's something of quality about you, and you'll pay some basic, it's his decision, maybe he wants to write under a pseudonym, or maybe he wants to write under his name and say, later on with the credit, I'll pull my name off, but it's his decision. But you can hire writers in the Writers Guild. What I'm trying to do is get you to know it's not your problem. It's his concern. And to, that's the situation. Next, director. Directors in the Directors Guild. That's a joke. You'll get just about all of them, except maybe the top 30 directors. They'll want to read the script. We're assuming you know the script. They have discerning eyes. If they're in the Directors Guild, they've read a lot of scripts. And if they read the script, and they go, wow, this is good. Hey, if it's non-guild, hey, let's just make the movie. Let's just make the movie. And you'll get that director now. Now, you understand low budget minimum, if you sign with the Directors Guild, is going to be 120 to 150,000. But if you don't sign with the Directors Guild and you want to hire a director in the Directors Guild, this is what Corman pays for low budget. This is what you should pay for low budget. On this one, a three-week shoot, it would be five to $9,000. One to two thousand dollars per week, that's more than enough. Plus the money for pre-production and a little money for post. Next, actors. Hiring actors. This is the easiest thing in the world to hire. Don't say you've got to sign with SAG because you want professional actors. You get those actors that are in SAG, even if you're non-SAG. In this room, this will be the easiest. Raise your hand if you're in SAG in the room. Raise your hand. Okay, you're the closest. Excuse me, I'm shooting a feature film next week. You've read the script, you like the script, you act well, you uh, cast well for the part. I'd like you to star in it. You'll have an opening title credit, single card credit, you'll be on the home video box, and you'll be in the newspaper ads. I'm not SAG, but I'll pay you $500 a week, $1,500. Would you like to star in your first feature film? Who do I have to kill? <laughs> in SAG, SAG, SAG. You will have no problem with SAG, and you will have no problem even getting name people. Not the celebrity, AB people. But you want to go get Sally Kirkland? You want to go get Faye Dunaway? Come up with a ten dollars or $25,000 check for one or two days. I'll get to that later on. No problem hiring SAG people. That's the easiest of the guilds not to worry about. Question. Yeah, you, you keep referring to opening title credit on a feature film. Yeah. What, what does it take to, to be in that category? 
I mean, for instance, what? you could go do a, a film uh, that's non-union, non-guild members or anything. Well, you're still going to have opening title credits in every film. Right, but what if no one ever sees it and never goes anywhere? Well, you're not planning on that to start yeah. off with, unless you're planning to go directly to the video in the foreign market, which I'll get to tomorrow. Uh -huh. That's a different sort of concept genre. This is sort of, we're all playing, we're going to be the next art film that's going to get made, going to go to the festival route and get picked up by Miramax, a new line, a fine line, a Samuel Goldwyn, or maybe we get picked up by the big studios. But if it doesn't get picked up? That's not your problem, although you would like it to. Yeah. That's what, I'll tie that all together in the business plan, okay. but that's not your problem. That's not your problem. If what if it doesn't, then you owe him another 10 or 20 thou? No, that's not there. No, I'm just thinking in terms of the credits. The credits you're giving people, you're paying people with opening title credits, hopefully single title cards. They don't share the screen space with anybody else. And hopefully, there's no guarantee this film gets to the theatrical marketplace in North America. No guarantee. There's no guarantee. Just everybody will say, let's make the movie. Let's just make the movie. With SAB, do you go to SAG and try and cut a deal? No, you don't cut any, uh, you don't. Did you hear me? Don't worry about SAG. Don't worry about DGA. Don't worry about Writers Guild. Here's the bottom line. The only reason you sign with a guild or a union, there is only one reason. It's to get the money. If somehow in your getting the money deal, you've done, gone through pre-selling, or you're playing a big negative pickup route, or you're going through the foreign sale that is predicated on you getting completion bonding, and the bonding company won't give you a bonding contract unless you're working with professionals. How do they qualify professionals? They state you've got to be a guild and union signator. They might let you out with the union. Then, in order to get the money, you have to sign. Yes. My opinion, this is just my opinion, I'm not gospel. The only reason you will ever sign with SAG, DGA, or Writers Guild is because you've already sort of got the money and now you've got to sign with one of them to get the paperwork contracts together to get the money. Or maybe you are so obsessed with this one writer and a script that he or she will not sell it unless it's right or deal. If you're that obsessed, then you have to. Or if you're so obsessed with this one actor and this actor is just going, no. <laughs> um, it's bottom line, I'm not doing it. And you're obsessed that you've got to use this actor and you won't go to somebody else, then you've got to. If you don't, don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. And don't think about the guilds or unions are ever going to send Guido or Carmen out to get you. <laughs> it never happens. There is Roger Corman in Venice. There's his company out there on, around the corner from the Rose Cafe on Main Street. He's shooting 42 to 45 feature films right now.